I wrote a quick article today after uh, popping into a few spaces on Twitter, hearing different things that people have been saying and also things that I've been thinking about and conversating with uh, friends and other individuals in the space in different communications. Uh, so I quickly put together some core ideas around a no-code NFT smart contract and NFT collection generator. <clears throat> uh, and in this video, I will go over um, those ideas and I'll talk about you know where they come from, the direction that I went, the problem I was trying to solve, uh, as well as some of the challenges that I thought I'd uh, face in developing this kind of a solution. And also the purpose is really to create a uh, open communication and conversation uh, around this topic and get like-minded individuals um, engaged and involved in the community. Um, so what I'll do, you know, I'll just jump in to what's going on. So the article is on my blog and my website. It's titled No Code NFT Smart Contract and NFT Collection Generator. It's the latest post uh, accessible on the homepage and on the blog. And in it, I've included some assets. The prototype, which was designed in Figma, um, and write up about pretty much what's going on. Some examples of the interface, um, as well as some further information about the project and the project uh, file itself, which I'll go through here, as well as the prototype. And in it, you can you know see some basics and you can start to understand some things um, and start to see some of the future vision documents and where this could potentially be heading. Um, and then additionally, you know there's a call to action where people can get together and really drive this forward. We need users to do user research, understand pain points and needs. We need technical people to really figure out what kind of uh, roadblocks we might face in the creation of smart contracts uh, and the verification process specifically, which I'll touch on uh, shortly. <clears throat> so there's some other stuff. And, you know, likewise, if you need help, please reach out um, and also, you know, share this if you find value. You can leave comments here on the blog post. You can leave comments in uh, the YouTube channel. You can hit me up on Twitter with that thread uh, wherever you see fit. But, you know, let's pop into it. So NFT code, uh, uh, and a, blah, blah, blah. no code NFT smart contract and NFT collection generator. So one of the first things really that comes to mind is how do we create a solution for individuals who are not very technical uh, they don't want to be very technical and they need an easy way to manage the creation and uh, curation basically of their items and then you know the, for the deployment of those contracts and then the freedom and flexibility to put those contracts wherever they see fit so in thinking that through you know the initial ideas started around just some baseline benchmarks right we've used platforms like soul c We've used platforms like OpenSea. We've used platforms like Foundation. We know that they have a general form format that they follow in the creation of an NFT, right? A specific individual item. And we know that in order to create those items, um, basic information needs to be captured. I went ahead and looked at this and tried to order this in a better you know, manner, hierarchy, uh, information architecture. Uh, those are key things, right? But I looked at these to get a general idea of what's to be expected, what should be expected, and what should we be considering in a solution. The same thing here for creating a collection, right? There's certain caveats and certain uh, aspects to creating, deploying, and then verifying uh, an actual smart contract. So it's much simpler in interfaces like SolC, you know, where you basically put in some basic information similar to creating an item, and uh, the same with OpenSea. And I'm running through this quickly to give context. You have the access to this file in the, uh, in the blog article. Um, it is a read-only file, so, you know, you can leave comments everywhere else, but, you know, you, you're able to view um, all of this information at a much slower pace, just really outlining why and how it's structured the way it is. 
Um, but you know, when you really break it down, creating a smart contract requires a few different things. First of all, you need to have uh, some information. Right here, you're going to need to have the ABI, the contract address, the image URI, and the meta metadata URI. Those are key to the verification process. Um, so, but there's also basic information that needs to be created and collected in order to build out a uh, smart contract with a bunch of non-fungible tokens, you know, 100, 200 million, however many you want to make, right? So in doing that, again, information architecture, hierarchy, we break it out in what makes sense, right? And started to think through. There's different aspects to the uh, verification process, right? So you build out the contract, you collect specific information, and what you have here is this basic information that gets edited. You have the name, you end up uh, creating a token ID somewhere. I forget where that is, it's missing in this specific example. You put in the price, you put in the amount, you know, and you set some basic parameters. And once that gets all sorted, you end up in a space where you're able to start choosing specifics around compiling. And really, truthfully, that can be done on the back end. The user doesn't have to worry about that. There's particular standards, you know, the compiler itself relates to the Solidity versions that you're using. And, and really, truthfully, auto compile and optimization are something you're going to want anyway. So just turn it on. Nobody needs to be clicking those buttons. And when they're ready to compile, that's when you end up in this space where you need to get this ABI code. But this ABI code and the contract address, it doesn't automatically tell you you need that. So why not send some sort of a curl or some sort of a uh, command in the background to capture this information and append it to the collection being created in the no-code or low-code uh, NFT smart contract creator, right? So that's a lot of malarkey. But at the end of it, we need to end up in a place where a contract is verified and the user can take the flattened contract the ABI and the contract address and make sure everything matches against some specific configurations on Polyscan or whatever network that they're using in order to verify this particular contract, right? So let's let's look at this. You know, and this is a very simple approach. It's by no means an end-all be-all. I'm going to show you how this document kind of flows and I'll jump into the prototype to talk to the idea. So it's the no code. Uh, NFT and NFT collection smart contract and you'll see we have two basic paths you know upon this first time user experience we have a single and a collection the, they both flow vertically top to bottom so you'll be able to run through and start to look at the different elements that were deemed basic necessities to creating a single item or a collection of items and when you dive into you know the collection of items you can see where i start to take this container approach and then i start to pose some questions and some ideas to viewers of the communities and such like that and i walk through these different states of how a container could look before finally allowing the user to get to a place where uh, everything looks kosher and you know they might be ready for compiling which then subsequently can lead to uh, deployment of a contract and the sexful, successful creation of the actual collection, you know, ending back at the start. So the document flows as such, zooming out, you'll end up in a view like this. Up here at the top left, where my cursor is going, those are just local components used to build out this uh, document and some of the views here under the heading creating NFT benchmarks. I've locked this group, but it's just the basics of what creating a single item uh, looks like in marketplaces and some of the inputs and processes that need to be considered for a bench line standard, a benchmark standard, um, as well as creating collections. It outlines the top three and some of the, the UI screens and uh, elements that need to be input in the actual creation of a collection itself. Zooming back out, you know, the two flows, everything goes top to bottom, and you can see how linearly they just go through the different steps and states. 
Now this is very high level. This isn't fully thought out. There's a lot of interaction patterns that should be thought through. Um, there's different elements that need to be considered. And there's also probably better ways to approach this. This is a simple visualization to kind of communicate the idea. So this is one file that you'll be able to look through. And the additional file that you'll be able to look through is going to be this prototype that I'm going to pull up here and walk through some of the concept. What I like to do is I like to zoom out, scale down to fit, make sure everything starts. And if you've never used a tool like this, um, you know, you might not know what to do. So in this case, if you click on the screen, two things can happen. This particular screen, you saw this blue flash. That means when you click on this, an interaction will happen. Other times, and you'll see it happen in this document, when you click on the screen, it might navigate to another page. Not to worry, some basic controls will pop up along the way to the bottom here, and you can easily navigate back and forth with this directional arrow. You can, you know, uh, forget that. And, and you can restart by hitting R or hitting restart at any point. So, just to really f f fire away here, outlining the two paths, right, we have two different paths we can go down, like Led Zeppelin says, in Stairway to Heaven. We can create a single NFT or a collection. The creation of a single NFT is pretty simple. Uh, you can explore that on your own. What I'll jump into is the more complex version, which is the actual complexion, sorry, co uh, collection, where deployment and verification are one of the caveats and challenges I tried to solve for. And I tried to solve for that by creating this particular type of um, container. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to get the width, right? And the initial thought was that we have some basic fields that need to be uh, captured, and we have some basic elements that need to be captured in order to create this container, right? And in creating this container, what I'm also proposing is that by suggesting or requiring the user to upload an image, we can initiate the first initial uh, upload to IPFS for uh, the images and the base URI for the images, and we could potentially, you know, create <coughs> the JSON file on the back end, an empty JSON file on the back end, which would also populate the base URI for the metadata, which could then be stored uh, with this container. So as the user moves through the actual form, they end up in these different states. So, and I'm outlining this here. Uh, you could read this on your own. I'm not going to run through it, but it's basically saying, you know, the exact same thing I just said. How could we do that? And what are the possible things that we might run into? And, you know, is this even uh, achievable? Right. So once you've passed this, for this first state, we've captured an image and some basic information regarding the collection. Now, I'm reminding you, this is a very high level general idea to start a conversation. Elements are not placed appropriately. They're just simply put on a screen to outline content, placement, and inputs, paths, etc. This is a very high level uh, wireframe if you're not familiar with a type of diagram. You know, I'm showing some basic controls which I think might be necessary, things we should talk about. And I'm also showing these additional buckets, if you will, of information that needs to be completed to an extent in order for the user to create that smart contract and deploy it, right? So in doing so, we run through this aspect where now we're requiring further information that might not necessarily be needed on the first step, right? The first step is just simply to create the shell, to create the container, and if the user wants to come back at a different time to fill in these different details, they can, and they can add you know, as much information as they have, as they need. Uh, and reminding you, this is very, you know, high level, not super thought out. Like, just kind of what I saw in my research. Um, and then moving through that, we end up, you know, having this information captured. It gets displayed in read-only states. The user is understanding they're moving through a flow. They're required to fill in certain information. Uh, and that information is important because in order to get the, the outcome, the final outcome, which is a smart contract that they know isn't going to have errors, then they need to make sure that all of this stuff is captured. So once that's done, you know, they put in all the final tidbits of what they need, you know, and this is outlining the flow of creating a single token. 
now that the collection has been created and the basic details around the collection are created and once this single item is created we now have you know an example of a visual example no code of what a smart contract is going to look like uh, a collection with a you know token symbol various elements that would be necessary and displayed on different types of marketplaces all sorts of metadata pertaining to the contracts as you know the tokens themselves and then we give the user this simple aspect of clicking you know compile uh, you know I didn't mean to click it that fast but once it's compiled you know all of that information that I talked about earlier the ABI the contract address the flattened contract those are things that have to be verified so these are where questions start to come into play for more technical um, individuals you know does the user have to be routed out of the application to polyscan or the network in order to verify the contract can that be embedded in the interface or can that be done in the background with the stored information um, through some sort of an api call you know those are all questions that need to be solved by the community or and things we have to talk about um, but in moving forward right we get we face this final state of the collection the creation of the contract and we have this moment to think through like oh shit, are we ready and if we say yes we deploy the contract and we know there's no turning back once it's deployed we get a, some sort of a success you know because there is like a process it might take a little while we might end up back in our dashboard at the fungible factory nft where we see individual nfts we might have created earlier and the collection in the pending state which will automatically update when it's done and then we can do whatever we want right so this is a really rough outline and idea communication tool to use that we can kind of all come together uh, looking forward you know we definitely need to do more user research artists designers creatives we need to get together we need to understand you know a little bit about you contextual inquiries or what these are called your day-to-day -day, um, stuff that you do a little more about demographical information just simple stuff to build user personas um, and then and outside of that we need to capture pain points needs right and through all that research patterns will evolve those patterns will be established into uh, concepts and ideas and those concepts and ideas can further shape um, this vision you know engineers we got to come together and designers we have to come together too you are designers you know we need to do a good job you know making this work out right but basically to make this a success a group of people need to come together I'd love to work on it with you know anyone or everyone I'm open to comments I really want to hear what you guys have to say I have the Figma file available for you to review um, you know my website feel free to leave comments there feel free to reach out to me on Twitter um, discord and I do have a slack channel that we can use to start building up team and figure out what's necessary um, you know but let's do it so here's the first idea here's my first pass I want to hear what you have to say uh, love it hate it got ideas let's add on it let's make this evolve sounds good catch me on the internet Dane Wasalka all the different channels Twitter YouTube yada yada yada